Hello the folks, it is TIJ Gaming and welcome to a brand new video. Today it is time for another Football Manager 2021 team going. Today we turn our attentions to Manchester City, a club that missed out on the Premier League last year, only for the first time since 2017. Um, of course, the fantastic Liverpool beat them last year and this year the Blues are looking for revenge. Not the best start to their season in real life, so perhaps you want to come in and manage them on FM21 and make a difference to that. Definitely an exciting save with Man City, a club that arguably is still the best in, in England, the best in Europe, even possibly the best in the world. But it didn't quite happen for them last year, and uh, it seems they're on the slide a little bit, and maybe it's up to you to arrest that duck in form. But uh, in today's video, this is a team guide, as I said before, and this is for those of you who are fairly inexperienced at Football Manager, trying to learn a few tips and tricks, get a bit of a head start on your save. This video isn't necessarily for those who have played Football Manager for years, are experienced in the game, but of course where you can help, you can leave comments for your fellow FM comrades in looking at maybe where they can improve. And I'm not going to bring anything necessarily new to the table, but if you've got any inside knowledge, any players that I mention that perhaps... Um, you disagree with or any players I don't mention that uh, you think ought to be mentioned, leave them down in the comments and uh, we can discuss it all down in the comments and uh, of course feel free to discuss yourselves down in the comments. But in today's video we're going to have a look at the club vision for Manchester City, the new players they've bought in, the dynamic screen, the tactic which I would recommend and also some youngsters to watch. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So the first uh, little screen here is the club vision, what the club is looking for you to do. So the chairman has set out these um, bits of club culture. Not a surprise here that the club wanted to play attacking football, entertaining football, possession football. Those three objectives really go hand in hand with each other. And it's important to note that, uh, well, pardon the pun, that uh, these important bars here, it's worth looking at. The club really, really, really wanted to play attacking football. It's crucial. But if you don't sign high reputation players, for example, they're not going to be as bothered. And we'll come to that a little bit more in detail when we look at the objectives down here. Developing players using the club's youth system, there's no problem with doing that, I don't think. And signing high reputation players, probably um, from Europe. So in terms of the five-year plan, uh, the club wants you to sign young players to develop for profit. Again, I don't think there's a problem with that. Maintain the club's status as the most reputable team in England. Basically, play well and you'll do that. And then to work within the wage budget. That is what every club is expecting. The club, club you can see here is currently spending three million a week on wages. I should have at the fort. And the wage budget is three million, uh, three point eight million. So you've got five hundred thousand pound a week to play with. There, you can move this toggle bar. Not at the moment, but um, a little bit later on, you can move this toggle bar, and it, of course, it will increase the transfer budget. Um, and obviously decrease the wage budget with that. So at the end of the current season, there's no surprise the, look, the club are looking for you to challenge for the Premier League. But crucially, and I think a rather good thing, the club aren't looking for you to win the Premier League. Rather challenge for the Premier League. So if you finish maybe 5-10 points behind the winner of the Premier League, the club aren't going to be that aggrieved. At the same time, if you put in what you think is a challenge for the Premier League, you lose your last 10 games and you finish 5th, well, you might be out the door. Um, a few other bits and pieces, FA Cup reached the final, that's a tough one, but again, that's a preferred objective, and the Champions League reached the final. I think that they've gone a little bit easier on the Premier League, because they want you to do what uh, the club haven't done before in the Champions League. Man City have won the Premier League plenty of times now, and I think that their objectives are very opposite to Liverpool. Liverpool now very much focus on the league rather than the Champions League. They've been there and done that in the Champions League. But of course, Manchester City have never tasted true glory in the Champions League. And that's something hopefully under your tenure that you can do. But looking at the importance of these objectives, as I mentioned earlier, to reach the final of the FA Cup this season is only preferred. To reach the final of the Champions League is required. So, for example, if you were thinking, right, I need to get to the final of the FA Cup, I'll use all my players and someone gets injured in the semi-final, maybe that might not be the best way to go about it. You know, if you get to the if you get to the quarter final and drop out of the FA Cup, they're not going to be that bothered. Equally, if you get to the quarter final of the Champions League and drop out, the club are going to be fairly sad. So just bear that in mind when you're looking at squad selection and which matches you are prioritising. Um, in terms of uh, going forward, the club are looking to, um, to maintain a Premier League title challenge. Interesting that within the next five years, there's no explicit objective to win the Premier League. And that's very uh, clear and, and showing that Manchester City aren't really bothered about the Premier League as much as they are. They want to win that first Champions League, and that's clear. At the end of the third season, the club really wants to win their first Champions League. And I think given the team you've got, 
that is something that can definitely be done. As long as you can break the duck, because it seems that Man City have been a club, a little bit like Belgium, I suppose, on the international stage, that have got all the players, but never seem to be able to do it in Europe. In style, at least, anyway. Um, if we look at the dynamics, I don't think there's any problems here. No surprise, looking at these three team leaders, we've got Sergio Aguero, Kevin De Bruyne, and Fernandinho. Bear in mind, Fernandinho is now 35 years old, so he is past his best. He's looking at retiring probably soon. But other players will move into that team leader role. I feel like somebody like Raheem Sterling, Bernardo Silva, maybe even Gabriel Jesus might move into that team leader role. In fact, I think that Sterling would be an excellent choice for captain in the future. And I'll say that through gritted teeth as a Liverpool fan. But uh, I don't think there's any problems here with the hierarchy. I really don't. This will change over time as more players get used to the squad and some players like Fernandinho start to drift out. But uh, yeah, I don't see any problems with that. So... Just make sure that you manage your players well. Don't be too aggressive with them, but tr try and tread a fine line. And uh, if there are, are any qualms in the squad, make sure you deal with it fairly quickly or else it could get pretty, pretty nasty. Especially if those qualms are about one of these three team leaders. Okay, penultimate section of the video then. Let's have a look at the tactic we have used for Manchester City. We have gone for a Gagan press to match the Jurgen Klopp tactic. And we've gone for a 4 2 3 one with Edison in the goal. We've got Walker, Diaz, uh, Laporte and Mendy. And... Uh, Actually, we won't look at the tactic first. We'll go a bit... Well, it's not necessarily off-piece, but I did miss this section off. Um, we need to have a look at the new players because you might be thinking there's new players at the back and you've never heard of Ruben Diaz, for example. So let's go through that very quickly now. So they've brought in um, three big signings. A few youngsters here we're not going to go through, but three big signings. They've brought in Ferran Thomas... Uh, Ferran Torres, even, not Thomas. Ferran Torres, the... Um, 20-year-old from Spain, from Valencia, have also been for 21 million. A fairly cheap signing, really. Um, a breakthrough prospect who seems a decent rating for the senior team now and will get better in the future. He can play on either wing and can also play as a right midfielder if that's something you're looking to employ. But uh, he's definitely a player that might well be the successor, um, I think probably on the right, I would say, um, for, for somebody like perhaps De Bruyne. You've got Bernardo Silva, who's your best player there, but... Again, it's just bringing someone who's a bit younger. He's only 20 years old. And as it says there, he's a breakthrough prospect with a five-year contract. Someone who might be more familiar to English football fans is Nathan Ake, who has joined the club from Bournemouth. They relegated Bournemouth for £40 million. City, uh, in my opinion, have chucked a lot of money at uh, def uh, defenders. And that's seen now. They've got six choices at the back. Um, they've got Laporte, Fernandinho, who's a choice that's going to be scrubbed off over the next few years. And, of course, Eric Garcia, their youngster, is leaving on a free transfer at the end of the year. So, on reflection, I suppose that they haven't got that many centre-backs, but they have got their natural four. They've got Laporte, who's got to be a first choice, Diaz, Stones and Ake. So, uh, be interested to see which one you pick out of those. Looking at potential, I think it would probably be best to try and develop Diaz and Laporte as uh, a defensive partnership. And that is the big money signing for Man City this year. £62 million from Benfica. The 23-year-old comes in as a regular starter who has the potential to be a whopper of a player. So if we look at the tactics, we have gone for that um, defensive duo of Diaz and Laporte. Um, these roles, really, I don't think there's too much difference with them, but uh, I have put Diaz as a ball-playing defender and Laporte as a standard central defender. We've got Walker and Mendy on the wing-backs. We've got Cancelo, of course, who joined the club um, last year for £58 million, who can definitely come in on that right-back position. But I think Walker is the man to put there at the moment. But Carl Walker, he's 30 years old. Again, getting on a bit. So the likes of, you know, Cancelo, Diaz, um, Ferran Torres, they're really players for the future. You can see the likes of Walker. Um, I mean, Laporte's not getting on as such, but he is 26 years of age. So as you go four or five years into the save, um, some of those younger players will really start to come to the fore. I've put Rodri and Kevin De Bruyne in the midfield. What an asset you have in Kevin De Bruyne. I'm almost very, very jealous. Look at that. It's very rare you get a player that's over four stars. He is a prime player. And I think in that advanced playmaker position, he's really going to do a really good job. On the wings, we've got Bernardo Silva and uh, Raheem Sterling. No surprise there. With Phil Foden, he has to start playing in the first team. He's a player now that he's only 20 years old, but ultimately, you do one of two things with him. You play him in the first team, or you sell him. Because, uh, you know... It, it, He's a player that you just can't send out on loan anymore. He's, he's too good for that. He's a good rating for the senior team. And a good rating for Man City's senior team means he's a whopper for anybody else. And, uh, yeah, he's got to play. So we've put him in that attacking midfield position just behind Gabriel Jesus. And 
personally, I think Aguero's the better player. But Aguero is 32 now. Gabriel Jesus is only 23. So you have to look and potentially think that it might well be a change in the guard up front for Manchester City with Gabriel Jesus taking that position. Uh, we've got Ilkay Gundogan on the uh, on the bench again, another good backup option. Riyad Mahrez and Sergio Aguero. And of course, you've got John Stones, who's injured at the moment in game, but uh, he's another choice. Personally, a choice that if he's not getting into the squad regularly, he might be one to sell because he's 26 years of old. He's 26 years of old. He's 26 years of age. And he's a player that is in his prime, would be very valuable to anybody else. But I guess you might lose a bit of money on him. That might be the only downside. But he's only got two more years yet left on his contract. If he's not playing that often, does he deserve a new contract? That's questionable. Uh, Garcia's leaving on a free uh, free transfer. You've got Fernandinho and also Zinchenko, who is a very, very, very versatile player looking at this. Can play um, left back, central midfield. All across the attacking midfield, and that is a real versatile player to have. Only a fringe player at this point, but uh, as you can see, he's sort of going to be third or fourth choice at all these positions. So uh, a good asset to have for the squad. Um, so before we finish off the video, let's have a look at um, players to watch in the under-23s and uh, the under-18s. You can see we've got a lot of good players here. Not enough time course to go through all of them. We've got Taylor Hardwood Bellis. Um, who's an 18-year-old defender. I focused on him first because we were looking at potentially offloading John Stones. And if you do offload John Stones, it might be a question perhaps of bringing Harwood Bellis into the first squad, uh, the first team. He's not that far off being in the first team. Maybe a year out on loan wouldn't do him any harm. If you look at the rating compared to John Stones, he is lacking a lot in technicals, attacking and vision. But remember, he's only just turned 18 years old, so a lot of time for him to improve. Other players of note, you've got Jaden Braff, who's 17 uh, years of age, signed from uh, PSV Eindhoven. That's a club with a good youth system and uh, can play on either wing. Uh, Filip Stefanovic, he's gone out on loan to Partizan uh, in Serbia. A player signed from Partizan this year for £6 million for Man City. Can play all across the attacking midfield. There are a lot of good players here. We haven't got time to go through all of them. Uh, don't think there's anybody else I particularly recognise. Kendra Simmons, I remember, I signed for... Uh, Hensford a few years back. You've got Jack Harrison, who's uh, an interesting one. He's out on loan at Leeds United. He's 23 years of age, a player that City signed a fair few years ago now, actually, and has been playing at Leeds for the last three, uh, the last three years. And is he a player that's going to get into your squad? I, I don't know. Again, that might be one to look to sell if he's not going to get into the squad. Um, Angelino, 23-year-old fullback. He's gone out on loan to RB Leipzig, signed for £11 million. Again, because you've got Zinchenko at left back, do you need Angelino? That's a question. Uh, there's a few players here that are definitely deadwood. Patrick Roberts has never really developed into the player that people thought he would be. Um, there's some potential here, but you've got a lot, a real wide range of players who are uh, very young, in terms of 18 going into that team, very young, and players who are 23, 24, who perhaps you might look to move on. But some players take longer to develop, but the likes of Patrick Roberts and Jack Harrison, if they're never going to get into the first team, you might as well try and offload them and sell them for a profit. We've also got the under-18 gig. You can see there's a lot of potential in here, but uh, the under-18s is one where there's more room for license, if you like. Um, as you can see, that he could be a two-star player, could Romeo Lavia, but he could equally be a three-and-a-half star player. So there's a lot of difference between those two ratings and that's really all about development which you can see in this screen here the development center two players who are currently first team candidates who are pointed out were Ta taylor hardwood bellis and Jaden bra funnily enough that wasn't well it was actually it was a coincidence i didn't look at this screen beforehand i picked out those two and i'm quite proud of that but uh, you've got the ones to watch here the five players that are to watch recommended by your, your cult roldofo burrell uh, five players to watch, and uh, it'll tell you how good they could become. And then if players are injured, maybe need to go out on loan, etc., etc. If there's any qualms about a player, they will be in this screen here where they need attention. But uh, Harwood Bellis and Jaden Braff look like two good players. Hmm, interesting. Um, but that's going to be for today's team guide with Manchester City. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And mainly, I hope this has been beneficial. You know, you've took 15 minutes out of your day to watch this, and hopefully you've learned something from this video. If you have, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts as well, and subscribe for Daily Football Manager 21 content during the beta. I am doing a Wolves beta save at the moment daily on the channel at 4pm, and I'm also covering every single Premier League team in these team guides. This is currently the fourth team guide, but we are getting through them. I think the next two will be Arsenal and Tottenham from memory, but uh, yeah, we are working through them, so hopefully the needs of every Premier League club will be covered. And if you've got any special requests for clubs to cover, 
put them down in the comments and I might just get round to it for you. But uh, for today's video, that's going to be it. Thank you very much for your company today. I've been TIJ Gaming and until the next time, I will see you guys later. Goodbye for now.